What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why your apples get petted. And since there's not a whole lot you can do with these, well, at least you can go golfing with them. Four. So if you are frustrated that your apples look like this, with black spots, lumps, it's all misshapen, that is because of a pest known as the plum curculio. Now the plum curculio comes in the spring. I'll post a picture over here. And that pest actually will feed on the young flowers as well as young fruit and will even lay eggs inside of the apple itself. Now when that happens, it actually causes the, uh, the flower and the immature fruit to be uh, not properly pollinated. And so what can happen is if you have lumps on your apples, that's actually caused from the seed cavity not being properly pollinated so that the seeds form on one side of the fruit and not the other. And that causes the lumps. But what causes the black spots? Well, the black spots are actually caused from two different reasons. The first reason is because the plum curculio feeds on the young fruit. The young fruit uh, is very tender about two to three weeks after fruit set. It's a great food source for the plum curculio, and so a few bites is all it takes to create a scar. And it's no different than if you try to you know, carve your name in a tree. I think we've all done that. Not that you should, but I think a lot of people have done it. And when you carve your name in a tree, the tree eventually tries to heal itself, and when it heals itself, it leaves a scar. And so that is all that really is. Now, the second reason why there can be black spots is actually a little more gross, and that is the exit hole of the plum curculio. So the plum curculio will actually uh, lay an egg inside of the immature fruit, and that is actually the home for the larva of the beetle. And the beetle will then grow, pupate, and needs to leave. And that is what leads to the final black spot that you typically see on apples, and you can typically see it sometime around late summer, early fall, and that is the exit hole. Now, in every apple, you're going to start to see a little hole there and a little hole there. And those black spots that are not scabs, the scabs are actually fused up. The holes themselves are the exit hole where the larva leaves and the life cycle continues. So, how do we stop the plum curculio from attacking our apples so that we can have better shaped fruit and you know, edible fruit? Because I don't know about you, but I don't like a protein source when I'm eating my apples. So the first way you can control the plum curculio and actually end up with more beautiful and edible fruit is by spraying the plum curculio. Now, a lot of gardeners fear this because they worry they're gonna kill beneficial insects like honeybees. However, there's one way to prevent that, and that's actually spraying after blossom drop. So when your apple trees are blossoming, you're gonna have not only the plum curculio present, but you're also going to have honeybees present. And you don't wanna do that because the same insecticide that's going to kill them is also gonna kill the honeybees. And you don't wanna do that because you really want those beneficial insects around. So what you can do is you can do uh, what a lot of orchards do, which is wait until blossom drop. As soon as the blossoms start to fall off, you know that the fruit has actually been pollinated and there's no interest, you know, honeybees don't have any interest in uh, landing on a flower that's already starting to die. And so it's totally safe to start spraying. Plus the plum curculio does not lay its eggs in the fruit until about one to two weeks after the fruit has been actually, you know, successfully pollinated and the immature fruit has started to form. So you can start to spray as soon as you see the, the, the petals falling off the flowers, and that's how you know that you're safe. The first thing you can do when it comes to spraying is spraying an insecticidal soap. I'll post links to one in the description box down below. Dr. Bronner's makes a really good insecticidal soap. I've been using it for years. I actually really like it. And what it does is it coats the beetle. And since beetles breathe through their skin, it actually causes them to suffocate and die. Very, very effective. It also can coat the fruit as well as the leaves, making it very bitter and unpalatable for consumption. So if you're worried about the little you know, bites and scars and stuff, that's also gonna help to prevent that. The second spray that you can use is neem oil. Neem oil combined with something like pyrethrin uh, is a very, very effective spray. Pyrethrum will affect things like white fly and spider mites, which is a great insecticide to have on your apples since they can also get those. But the neem oil is actually what coats the, uh, coats the beetle itself 
and can suffocate them much like the insecticidal soap can. So neem oil is a very effective method as well. And then the third thing that, uh, that gardeners have done with limited success is actually known as netting. Now you can get netting, they make nets and they're crazy, but trees that are really, really large are kind of challenging to net because they get so big. Smaller trees are easier to net, obviously, but you actually take a net and you put it over, it's like a bag, you put it over the entire tree and it essentially prevents the plum curculio from coming in and, and landing on your trees because they are netted completely and then strapped down at the bottom. And you do that for about three to four weeks during the period of time when the plum curculio is laying its eggs. And so you can do that as well, very effective, but it's very costly and if you have a lot of trees, it just becomes a little bit unreasonable and you have to bag them after the blossom drop. Otherwise, you're literally going to isolate all the beneficial insects from pollinating your fruit trees. So those are the three things you can do to actually controlling the plum curculio. And there's one more that can actually help prevent them next year. So the final way to controlling the plum curculio is actually by controlling them for the next year. And that starts with the apples on the trees. See, when the apples fall, they fall down on the ground and the plum curculio is extremely smart because what it does is it actually uses that as a delivery mechanism to fall down to the ground, reduce its distance where it can actually then hatch from the apple, send the larva into the ground where it overwinters. And then in the spring, the life cycle happens all over again. So by being a good steward of your orchard and picking up all the apples that fall on the ground, that can help reduce its numbers, put them in a plastic bag, send them off to the dump or burn them. Do not keep them on site because that's gonna keep them near your apple trees and you don't wanna do that. And then the second thing is any apples that are left on the trees. A lot of times apples, you'll see them hanging on the trees still in like winter even. If they all get all brown and shrivelly and they're still hanging on the trees, pull them off. Generally, those will have plum curculio in them as well and you can help reduce the numbers that way. And the final way that you can reduce their numbers is just by picking a variety that is less susceptible to the plum curculio. This summer crisp was a bad choice. As you can see, it is just plagued by the plum curculio. And that's because I picked this variety not really knowing a whole lot about it when I first got it. Summer crisp is a very, very prone variety to the plum curculio, but a variety like Gala, if that grows well, or Granny Smith is a lot more, uh, it's a lot more hardy and resilient to the plum curculio. And so by doing your research and finding a variety that does well for you, can help have a little more success with growing apples so they don't look so quite so gnarly. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you have any other questions, post them in the comments box down below. I hope this answered your question. And if you like more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you later. Bye.